Okay, so hi, thanks for having me today. Really appreciate the invitation. Uh, today I'd like to talk a little bit about a, a, a lockdown project of mine called an Arduino meets GraphQL and the weather. But first things first, I'm Sasha. I'm a front-end developer based south of Wales, and I like to build web services and exploring new stuff in my spare time. So to begin with the why, what, and how, what I'll be talking about. The main motivation was that I always wanted a weather station. And instead of just buying one, I thought I might face the challenge to possibly build on one on my own. And for that, I defined four must-have features. It should be remotely accessible, so no matter wherever I am, uh, I should have the possibility of uh, looking up the latest temperature values. It should be self-hosted because I wanted to model my own data. I wanted to avoid any kind of subscription fee or subscription plan. Of course, an API, so that querying data and updating data is as easy as possible. And it should be as cheap as possible because I considered it as a hobby project and just didn't want to invest a fortune. So to sum it up in one sentence was the question I asked myself, uh, what if I could hook up an Arduino to a GraphQL API and store live sensor data in a database? So the next step was to form a sort of a theoretical approach. First, I needed to get the current time using the NTP protocol because an Arduino doesn't have any local clock system attached to it. Then I need to calculate the minutes before the next interval. Um, I wanted to collect then the sensor data, temperature values, humidity values, upload the results to the GraphQL API, and then do it all over again in the next 30 minutes. The sleep phase is very important because it makes it uh, independent to the weather station itself, whether it loses or gains power, because then I can define a fixed interval uh, based on the, on the uh, universal clock, the universal time zone, to upload the data. So where to start? I looked for an as cheap as possible development board and found one in the D1 Mini. Uh, it is a small Arduino compatible development board. And the main advantage of it is it has already Wi-Fi on board. So without attaching any other stuff to it, uh, you can already connect it to the internet and perform communication tasks. Of course, the Apollo GraphQL server for the API and everything web-based is hosted on Netlify and MongoDB Atlas because both offer generous free tiers. I'm not affiliated with any of those. What I ended up with was, of course, the D1 Mini, uh, two different temperature sensors, one being the DS18B20 and one being the DHT11. The DS18B20 is quite cool because it's attached to a cable, so you can place it uh, a little bit further away than the base station. And the DHT11 also features uh, humidity values um, to, to the temperature values. I also opted for attaching a microSD module, so whenever the uh, development board loses the connection to the Wi-Fi, uh, the, the fetched temperature data can be stored to an SD card and therefore uh, serves as a redundant memory. The total price is about 12 to 15 euros, so I consider that it's rather cheap. Um, if you buy lots of pieces for, for each of, of the sensors, then you even uh, get the price down significantly. So this is more or less the first demo setup. I wired everything up. On the left-hand side, you can see uh, the microSD module. On the center right is the development board with the Wi-Fi chip. And on the top right, there is this bluish uh, DHT11 temperature sensor. But all of this setup is mainly useless if you don't provide the correct firmware. So I needed to develop one. And this is basically the next step. So for the development, I chose to call this chapter C++ and the web. And if you're like me, uh, trying to avoid C++ at all costs because of bad memories made during your university, uh, the main disadvantage is you can't really get away uh, with anything else because Arduino strongly depends on a pre-compiled C++ firmware. Unlike Raspberry Pis, for example, because they feature a 32 to 64-bit uh, ARM processor and therefore are capable of running a fully-fledged Linux operating system. Arduinos consist of a small 8-bit microcontroller with a flash space of around 4 to 8 megabytes. And therefore, you have to write the whole instructions of what the Arduino uh, has to do on your own using the Arduino IDE. And the whole ecosystem is quite cool because it offers 
multi a multitude of freely available libraries. So for every sensor, for every HTTP project you're trying to, to uh, create, uh, the Arduino ecosystem provides a library and you can just wire it, um, hook it up all together in your source code uh, and basically you're uh, ready to go within a matter of minutes. The firmware uh, you have to write mainly consists of a mandatory setup and loop function. So you have to imagine if you start up the Arduino, then it first calls the setup function and sets up the connection to the Wi-Fi, sets the IP address configuration, uh, initiates the NTP client, for example, and then goes on to call the loop function over and over and over again until it loses power. Uh, the IDE itself is basically a one-stop shop for everything because it already contains drivers and the compiler. So you open up uh, a new project on the IDE. Uh, you possibly even just load a, a predefined demo code. Uh, you click on a button, it gets validated and compiled. And if the Arduino is uh, hooked up to your computer using a USB cable, then it gets flashed and uh, everything runs from there. So pretty smooth. Again, back to the theoretical approach. If you look at the flowchart, uh, it's basically the perfect tailor-made uh, flow for the loop function because it is a single-threaded loop function. Um, I call the synchronization to the NTP client. I let the whole process wait for a certain amount of time until I collect the sensor data and then upload the results again to the GraphQL API and wait for another 30 minutes. So basically that's that and that's all the weather station is doing for the whole day and for a whole night as long as it's running. But what about GraphQL though? I, manage, uh, I mentioned it shortly uh, at the beginning, but didn't uh, uh, talk about, uh, about it during the last few slides. So the GraphQL uh, communication was a bit of another challenge because if you take a look at those screenshots, the top one is a curl request uh, to a GraphQL API, which queries Star Wars film data. Uh, in this case, uh, the properties for the title, the episode ID and the release date. Uh, and that all happens within your terminal, but is only a syntactic sugar to what's pictured below, because HTTP uh, works as a single string that is split by carriage return escape characters. Uh, and if you take a look at the post at the first line, uh, we, we create a post request uh, to the root path of the host. We set the content type to application JSON and set the content length to 64 bytes because the body will be 64 bytes long and the server will check whether the whole body was transmitted or not. Then we need two carriage return escape characters uh, so that the server knows that the headers are now complete and the body is now being transmitted. So we have the uh, GraphQL body just as uh, within the, the curl request uh, above and then with the connection close, we close the connection and basically that's what happens if you try to post a GraphQL query to a GraphQL server. Since you probably know by now that Arduinos are a bit low level, I knew I had to align with the bottom screenshot and had to stuff everything together uh, in a string. And so basically for the weather station, it looks like this. The first one is a string variable called body with a lot of backslash escape characters for the string. And then uh, with a lot of string concatenations, it takes the, the, the preloaded or the, the, the just fetched uh, temperature data, appends it to the string, then calculates the length of the body, and then appends it to the request below. So the request below is basically just the same as we have just seen in the previous slide. We have the post uh, request at the first line. Then we have uh, at the end of it a uh, carriage return escape character. We have the host. We have a uh, content type. We have the content length. We have two uh, carriage re return escape characters. Then we append the body and then we close the connection. And using client.print, uh, client is a variable where the Arduino has instantiated the HTTP client. Uh, we will send the request to the GraphQL server. With the last um, function, the serial.println, uh, we can hook up the, the Arduino to some sort of a debugging functionality. So if you wire the Arduino via USB cable to your Arduino ID, you can read out the serial messages uh, because otherwise you don't have any control what's going on right now. So, that's that for the development. Now comes the final assembly, uh, also called solder till your fingers burn. 
because I had to do a lot of soldering and it's just not what I'm doing on a daily basis. So those are the, uh, the impressions of, of the final soldering. On the right hand side you see uh, how it all came together, uh, the resistors, the pins, uh, also the micro SD shield and uh, below is uh, a weather station without a micro SD shield. That's possible because the firmware is quite configurable so you can select uh, where the uh, temperature sensors are, are attached, which temperature sensors are attached and whether or not a micro SD card uh, is attached as well. I then also built a website for displaying the data that uh, has been gathered from the uh, weather station. Uh, and basically the whole source code is made open source and can be looked at uh, my GitHub repository. You'll find the firmware source code in there, the website source code and the GraphQL server source code. Uh, just to give you a short overview of what has been recorded so far this year, um, the weather station is online since somewhere between Christmas and New Year. We have had the highest, as of last week, we have had the highest temperature of 33 degrees on June 18th. The lowest temperature this year was uh, minus 12.9 degrees on February 13th. And so far, more than 16,600 entries have been uh, uploaded to the database from two individual weather stations. So that's that. Thank you very much. Uh, if you want to look up anything, uh, the source code is online available and if you need further help, just shoot me a question on Twitter. Thanks.